Here I am, hanging out, downtown in the capital city of Thailand. Kung Thae, or Bangkok, as most of the world knows it. When translated, the city actually means the city of angels. Of all the paths in life, it was a strange twist of fate that led me down the road to Thailand. And now, after a level of comfort, I actually feel as if this city is more my home than anywhere else. When I look closely at the city, I search for angels within. But all I see are people in self-centered masks, busying off to work while others shop more for wants than needs. Sitting here, I wonder, how much damage does this concrete jungle do to our well-beings? What are we missing out on with such a fast-paced, consumption-driven lifestyle? As I pass the time by on this particular day, a few things about the immediate future and beyond cross over in my mind. It is at this time that all roads lead back home as the Thais serve up one long, massive water fight. Song Gran, the Thai New Year, where a whole nation of people use water and powder to add smiles and wash away the wrongdoings of the past year. There is nowhere to run and hide. One always gets doused with water at the wrong times. And as for me, well, despite my quick feet, I'm an easy target. Maybe I should stock up on food and hide out in the comfort of home. I hate this festival. What a waste of water. My last home was also the City of Angels, known to most as LA or Los Angeles. I've exchanged one City of Angels for another and left the chaos of life behind. Or have I? The peace I seek still eludes me. I have taken up a friend on his long-standing invitation to visit his hometown. I'm traveling up to Nakhonsawan province. The drive is not that long, but during the biggest holiday of the year, the roads are bound to be full. So here we go. I'm on my way. In search of something other than the man-made chaos that some call development. Nature calls. I really have to go. Need to find a petrol station quick. I knew I should not have finished that entire bottle of water. Just an hour into the trip and I'm already forced to make a stop.
others on the road home to enjoy the Thai New Year with friends and family. And along the way, they too have decided to grab something to eat. I seem to have brought the negativity along with me, and here I am, forced to go at it alone. Maybe I should have just stayed home and watched this whole drama on TV. Well, maybe another shot of coffee will put me in the right mind. Despite my reservations, I continue to drive along at a stop and start pace. The freeways are jam-packed with buses, people swollen cars and pickup trucks, all full of hangers-on who chat, drink, and sleep the long trip away. Here we are, now getting close. The pace finally picked up and I cruise into the quiet, hopeful destination late into the night. I can't seem to lose the angel theme here. I am now in Nakhon Sawan. Nakhon in Thai means town or city, and Sawan means heaven. Comedy of life. From LA to Bangkok and now here, well, let us see what happens. Hopefully I've left the chaos behind and tomorrow I will try to look for anything that resembles much needed peace of mind. The way I ended up here was kind of a fluke. It's the hometown of one of my close friends in Bangkok, and although he does not live here anymore, some of his relatives and friends will be around to help open the house up for me. I'm staying here as a family friend in his old neighborhood. <laughs> Here they come. This is a great way for me to make some much needed merit. In Buddhist thought, it is believed that one of the central rites is the offering of food. On this morning, I am lucky to have gotten up on time so I can make this offering to the local monks and the newly ordained novices. Thank you.
kiss and incense in exchange for marriage. As the birds watch, I continue to survey the temple. I find clothes with names attached to them. They're strung up and swing in the wind. So I ask around. Some of the locals explain to me why these clothes are flying high up in the air, like kites. From what they tell me, this is a localized tradition. I'll have to admit, in all my travels here, I have not seen it elsewhere. Friends and family of the deceased have hung them up, an offering of new clothes. Even in the afterlife, we will need things to wear now and then. With some of the local sellers, I run into a unique version of rice. It is mixed with tamarind. Hmm, nice. After friendly chatting about how it is made, I really begin to realize, when up country, it is so simple to make new friends. As I walk along, I start to think about the heart of the people here. This is more what I imagine the Thai heart to be like, hearts where angels can reside. Strange that Songkran, a festival I am wary of, will become the bridge that leads me to a measure of peace. It is at this time that the whole country is focused on an experience of warmth and family reunion. During this festival, one's socioeconomic status is irrelevant to level of happiness. Joy permeates everywhere and between all levels. Where it leads me first is to a temple near the forest. In 
may take a bit of work for some people to recognize it, but if one listens to their heart and appreciates in what they already have, things are there to be found. If you hear it clearly enough, one can find what it is that can make them truly happy. In fact, it may be found in a thought or action from another. Something that, before arriving here, I would not have expected. Another important aspect of merit making for good karma is to make food offerings directly to the temple monks. As you can see, size and age does not matter. After the head abbot leads a prayer and blesses the food and all of those in attendance, a variety of rices, curries, soups, and sweets are offered and shared by the various families connected with this temple. As a gesture of kindness and acceptance by the locals, I've been asked to help with this prayer and ceremony. It seems as if I have quickly become a sort of celebrity around here. The variety of things that the people carefully prepared for the occasion pass through my hands and my heart begins to feel full. This rush of emotion is quickly followed by disbelief on just how much food there is. As I finish up the first task, I notice a broom and decide to do my part. We all should try to keep the surroundings clean for others to enjoy.
These particular piles are made of sand. The people who created them are hoping for good luck. Give sandcastles a whole new meaning. I guess one could call these sand pyramids. All of this heat and restlessness tells me that the peace still eludes me. Somehow, however, it feels a bit closer. I am quite thankful that this seems to have worked out. Not only do I have a place to stay, I have someone to help feed me. Sometimes, however, one has to go to great extents and sacrifice in order to show appreciation. What we have here is an omelet with red ant eggs in them. I guess it's better for me to eat the ants now and take the chance of them not making it to hatch. Could be a lot worse if I wait until they're large enough to actually bite me. Well, I guess it's now time to cool myself off and really enjoy some gun.
This ceremony is also for merit and to give thanks. Young persons or anyone younger than the elders will prostrate and pour water onto them in order to bless them, amongst other things, with good health. At the same time, the blessing also serves the purpose of thanking the elders for the nurturing that they provided as we grew into our spiritual and physical selves. Each and every time it can make someone laugh or smile. It was worth getting nailed with water. In fact, the water not only served to cool me down in the hot, humid weather, but it also dampened my restless spirit and helped me to realize more about myself and my connection to others. With Thai language and culture, there are a number of associations with emotions and the heart. To simplify, I compare Thai with the West in the following way. The West typically thinks with logic and the head, whereas in Thailand, thinking is done more with the heart and emotions. In Thai, there is a term, Dai Ron, which literally means hot heart, or in English, something more like hot-headedness. These kind of people are reminiscent of those who are quick-tempered and easily angered. And although the world is increasing in heat and hot-temperedness, this personality trait is an awkward fit into the Buddhist-based Thai culture. One just has to notice the smiles to find out why. All of these various forms of respect are an important reason why so many use this chance to return home, celebrate, and to send love and care to families and friends. This tradition of love and respect is something that I can only hope will be eternally preserved in the Thai culture and exported to others who have a lot to learn from the Thais and their outlook on it.
the meaning of songkran is actually kind of hidden or packaged and wrapped up as a gift. <laughs> On the surface, one sees only a lot of boisterous, often dangerous, day-long water fights on the street. Or maybe they notice an extremely noisy group of karaoke singers with enough liquid courage to belt out their favorite song. Or perhaps it is a temple concert, where everyone seemingly is having too much fun in an area that we think is reserved for religious rites. <laughs> But there is definitely something special about it, a sort of inner peace. This is what I'm here to seek. And there seems to be a bunch of people here that are actually willing to help me find it, whether they know it or not. As the water is aimed or poured, and the powder is wiped upon the cheeks from children and adults alike, I recollect another very important aspect of Thai culture. This aspect is represented by the phrase, Nam Dai, directly translated as, Water Heart. It is something that says something like, there exists a level of caring that could be just as easily shared with a stranger as with a loved one. The people of Nakhon Sawan have shown me an incredible amount of Nam Dai on this visit. These new friends have provided me with so much more good feeling and happiness than I could have ever imagined. Even as a stranger passing by their town, I was still able to have this wonderful experience.
The meaning of Songkran has been altered for me. While on the surface one sees loud, day-long water fights on the street, or groups of karaoke singers, or even a concert at a temple. The true core of this festival, however, are the links to the local Buddhist customs, and the collection of good karma, making merit from visiting temples, offering food, the act of pouring water on the newly ordained novices, or even full-time monks and abbots. This ceremony is also performed with elders with similar thoughts of thanks. So many are wrapped up in the collection of soon-to-be-outdated material goods that for the most part only serve to complicate our lives. It is wonderful to see that these possessions are meaningless to so many here. They give and care without expectations or anything in return. These simple actions have been the vehicle allowing me to uncover and rediscover myself. For the people of Nakhon Sawan, no matter what the relationship between them and yourself is, in fact, 
One might even be a complete stranger with a smiling face. And for any moment, you can become a beloved part of their family. This world would most certainly be better off if more of us thought in this way. Just because you don't understand the various aspects of the culture does not make them good or bad, wrong or right. We can only hope that more could have such an outlook on life, a sort of positivity with all living things. With more of this, our planet might have a better chance of a long life, and our Earth would most certainly have less destruction and violence. It is good to know that places such as Nakhon Sawan still exist, a place where the mind is free from the demands of modern day living.